I sort of moved forward then to the University of Minnesota thinking I was going to be a journalist. I was going to study the news ed sequence there and wind up in a newspaper. And what I came to find in my first year at school is that what journalism school at that time could teach you was how to type 25 words a minute. Beyond that, I'm not sure they knew what they were talking about. And I knew this because the same year I got to school, I got a job uh, at the local ABC affiliate in their newsroom in Minneapolis. And that began the long slide uh, into show business, the long, dark slide into show business, in, in which I never lost my appetite for books and for reading and for writing. But I was able to do a little bit of both. Uh, I was always writing my own material. And so I, I sort of stumbled around news for a couple of years and then was taken up as a, a talking head in other venues uh, and continued writing my own stuff. And it was, it was writing of a kind, certainly. Uh, but got off, the, got off the literary track and sort of worked in show business for 20 years. Uh, the last job I had in show business, I was under contract to Paramount Pictures. Uh, to develop my own late night show. Theoretically, I was going to be the guy who followed Arsenio, but things are never that linear in show business. And what I had discovered by then, uh, I was about 34, 35 years old at the time, was that my outcomes were completely in the control of other people. Mm -hmm. And that I was angry all the time because uh, I couldn't, I, I, I had done all the work, uh, I thought I had the talent, uh, uh, but that last push, that last thing that gets you where it is you think you want to go is out of your hands. It's kismet, it's fate, it's, it's a guy who went to Wharton and is now rejiggering the network to appeal to 18 to 34 year olds. So I, I had begun in that period at Paramount, uh, I had an office on the lot uh, to write just as a way to kill time. And I began writing humor pieces for the Los Angeles Times about what it was like to sit on the lot of Paramount with nothing to do. And those were uh, well received, and I found a lot of joy in doing them. And so uh, in, I guess, January of 1993, I wrote a piece for the New York Times op-ed page uh, for Valentine's Day. It was, a, it was a humor piece called Lovemaker Version 3.1. And it was just a, a, a humor piece that sort of posited the idea of what if you had a computer program that could write romantic poetry uh, for, for guys like me who can't. And I sent it in over the transom and they published it and two days later I had a book offer from Random House. And I thought, well, publishing is just as screwed up as show business. 